Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. Today, we're gonna be talking about hyped perfumes. Um, and these in particular, in my opinion, are absolutely worth all of the love and hype that they get. But listen, regardless of the love that you see online for particular fragrances, it is important to sample them first for yourself because there is no perfume that every single person loves. It simply doesn't exist. It can't exist. We all have different tastes, different style. Our noses interpret scents differently. We have different skin. There's a lot of factors that go into it. So just please be sure to sample first and make your own judgments. I'm only blind buying something if it's really affordable. So that's my spiel. These were certainly worth the hype for me. The first one that's really been having its moment is Giardini di Toscana Bianco Latte. If you watch any sort of, you know, perfume content, you'll know about this one. This is on par with Kaoli Vanilla 28 for me in my collection in terms of a staple vanilla, not in terms of the scent. They're very different. I really foresee this being like a cult classic, just a staple for people who love vanilla and gourmands. Bianco Latte is for me the gold standard of this particular scent category. This particular combination of notes when it comes to like a musky caramel vanilla. There are a lot of fragrances on the market that are in this overall kind of scent category and I certainly like how they smell, but it wasn't until I smelled Bianca Latte that I was absolutely blown away, completely addicted. I'm like, I need to have a bottle immediately. Not only is this scent just so yummy, but this performs amazingly well. You will leave an absolute trail. It projects, it lasts like all day. It's yummy on its own. It's a great layering tool. This smells like warm vanilla cookies. You also get this creamy dessert-like condensed milk kind of tone, but this never goes, for me at least, like too lactonic. I'm very sensitive to that kind of accord in perfumery. It's usually like a big no for me. This to me isn't giving me like dairy in the usual way that I pick it up. It's truly dessert-like, this combo of vanilla, this warm, gooey caramel. If you're someone who doesn't really enjoy sweet fragrances, then I don't think it's gonna be one for you. It really is for people who love caramel, vanilla, and gourmands. Stefan Umbert Lucas, God of Fire, really kickstarted my love for mango in fragrances. Like this was the first one that I really fell head over heels in love with. I love how mango smells, but a lot of the mango perfumes that I've tried are more linear, straightforward, nothing very exciting, and this wowed me. This is a perfectly ripe mango. I've smelled green mangoes, mangoes that are like overripe, where it's like, mm, they smell like they're going kind of bad. This is perfectly sweet and juicy, and it's complemented really nicely by these tart red berries. There's lemon, so that brings in a fresh quality as well. And then this is grounded with amber, cypriol, woody notes. It's got zestiness from the ginger. So this has a lot of character to it. It's grounded nicely, has this special sparkling kind of sweetness to it. It's so exotic and mouthwatering. It's a really special one in my collection. And I'm seeing more and more fragrance houses coming out with perfumes featuring a mango note. I think this and Wilhelm's mango skin kind of kicked off that trend. So hopefully I'll discover some more gems. I really love me like a unique mango perfume. It's definitely a compliment getter for me as well. I get about eight hours from this with the stronger projection. If you are a lover of amber, you've probably tried this already, but if you haven't, you've got to get your nose on MFK Grand Soir. This is like amber, <laughs> amber bomb. This is like the smoothest interpretation of amber. It is so 
warm and luxurious. It's It has this like cashmere-like quality to it. It's very well-rounded. There's both amber and benzoin in here being prominent notes. Benzoin is an amber-like note, but it comes across softer, it has this natural amount of sweetness, like this kind of vanillic undertone, and it almost provides like a little bit of like a powdery smoothed over texture. It's like a more palatable version of amber, I would say. And that's the experience I get from this because there are plenty of prominent amber fragrances that I've smelled where it's just like amber and it's dark and intense and it feels more rigid. Maybe it has a bit of a vintage like character or it's very spiced. This is like I said, just so smooth. You have this beautiful sweetness coming in from the vanilla and the tonka bean doesn't go too much into the sweet direction. It just pairs really nicely with these warm resins. And there's just a little bit of lavender in the mix. There isn't like a whole big list of notes in here, but there doesn't need to be. It's just... It smells rich. It's a scent that works for so many occasions, but in the fall and winter, it's definitely a cooler weather fragrance. But this could be your everyday scent during those months. You can wear this for a date. You can wear this to work. It smells like a very powerful businessman or woman. It's also very cozy and inviting. So yeah, it takes a lot of boxes. I would describe this as unisex leaning a bit more masculine and it has incredible performance. Lasts all day, strong projection. Next up, Armani Privé Rouge Malachite. This is a tuberose bomb and the best tuberose, I've said this so many times, I've put my nose on. I'm honestly really picky when it comes to tuberose. It's often like too bubblegummy or too mature. I don't know how they did it, but this is like the tuberose of my dreams. I don't, I don't know how anything could possibly top this in terms of like the tuberose category for me. I think that the notes that they decided to pair with this triple dose of tuberose, top, middle, and base, just made it perfection for me. It grounds it because we have this fresh spiciness from sage, pink pepper, and that won't be everyone's cup of tea. Like not everyone wants to pick up sage or pink pepper it really is in the opening experience but i love this top to bottom and the longer this sits on your skin the more creamy it becomes it gets just like a little bit more sweet not ever too sweet it's just like a natural sweetness and then there's also amber in the base really smooth and contributing to this overall floral creamy aroma is ylang ylang one of my favorite florals because it smells so bright and elegant it's like tropical and sunny and happy but so elegant and just this perfect creamy natural bit of sweetness that this flower has it's beautiful and there's a note of cashmere in which i think really speaks to the overall textural quality of this fragrance it really has that kind of cashmere like smooth presence this is a huge compliment getter for me so many people that I introduce this perfume to end up loving it. They're just like, oh, you smell so beautiful. I see this in a lot of people's bridal recommendation videos. It's perfect for that. And also if you just, you know, wanna smell incredible and have it be like your signature scent. And another one with great performance lasts all day for me with a strong projection. Layton from Parfum de Marly, a bestseller from the house. And I think, for very good reason. If you're into niche fragrances, it's like a classic for men. I think this became so popular because of all of the different dynamics going on in here. And it does it so well. Like the way that all of these elements have been blended, married together, it somehow works. Firstly, it has a fresh tone to the scent. You get this bright green apple, some citruses at the top. It has this aromatic quality. So you're getting this fresh experience mixed with then this very inviting, cozy, smooth, creamy bit of sweetness. There's a really good vanilla in here. And I think a lot of people are attracted to that because they're like, ooh, you smell yummy. But then it's grounded with woods and spices, namely cardamom and sandalwood. So you're getting all these different types of elements that people love to smell in, you know, more masculine scent profiles. We got some fresh, we got some like cozy inviting, and we got the woody and spicy. And it all just 
it works. It's not challenging, it's crowd pleasing, and it's unique. I mean, at this point, a lot of people do own this who are into niche fragrances, but it does have a very specific DNA and it lasts all day with a stronger projection. Another vanilla perfume that went TikTok viral is Latafa Nebras. This is another really good stable vanilla to have if you are, of course, into the note. I have a lot of vanilla perfumes in my collection, but this for me isn't redundant. I don't have a vanilla that smells quite like this. This is such a cozy, comforting perfume, and it's interesting because people get different things from this one. I've heard people get like mint chocolate chip cookies or something. I don't get anything minty from here, but a lot of people do. And cocoa, cacao is in here. I personally don't get something chocolatey per se, but I totally get a very powdery presence. So for me, I get a powdery, warm, cozy, sweetened vanilla primarily. Vanilla tonka bean musk. And it's sweet, but not overly sweet. It's got a smooth amber in the base and tart red berries in the opening. I, when I got this, I mean, I let it macerate for a month. And then after that, I was wearing this non-stop. I was wearing it like every single day. I was layering it. I was wearing it on its own. And I really just can't get sick of it. It's fluffy and delightful. I get about six hours with a moderate projection. I am now on bottle number two of Wilhelm Poets of Berlin. I had like the small size at first and now I got this baby. Truly one of the most unique fruity perfumes that I own in my collection, like fruity, vanilla, green, woody, absolutely something you gotta sample first because this has a note of bamboo, which some people love, this kind of like unique addition and other people are turned off by it. Um, it's really not a note that I see too often, but it provides this kind of like kick, like a little bit of this bitter greenery, but I personally really enjoy how this is paired with the blueberry another note i swear i don't see often enough and vanilla so there's this earthiness there's also a bit of freshness just a little bit of lemon it's got this woody base this is a perfume that i can wear like year round pretty much the fresh fruity notes really just absolutely blossom in warm weather i think that that's my favorite season to wear like springtime because that sweetness kicks up in a really nice way. I feel like the blueberry specifically pops more for me in the warmer months, but then because of this wood and vanilla, it still works for me like in the fall. I've introduced this to several people in my life. I gave a sample to one of my friends. She bought it immediately. I've showed this to my mom, my sister. They wanted a bottle immediately, which did surprise me actually, because it is so unique and they aren't like heavily into the fragrance world. I mean, my sisters are now because of me. And I get about five hours with moderate projection. This one, Maison Revelle, uh, oh, what? What are you saying? Um, this one, Maison Crivelli Hibiscus Mahajad, one of my favorite rose perfumes in my collection, and I'm so picky, so picky about rose. I often don't like it, but I love, love this. This was love at first sniff. This like shot up to the top of my wish list when I smelled this because it, truly the combo of hibiscus, rose, and vanilla pure genius, genius. It's so fantastic. I'm actually surprised that Rose and Hibiscus had not been paired together frequently before this even launching. They really smell like they're meant to be paired together, just like how Rose and Lychee smell like two peas in a pod. Hibiscus is a floral that has this really bright, juicy, fruity-like undertone. I drink hibiscus tea all the time. So the hibiscus note in here is very realistic, very prominent. This smells so sexy. Like this is one of the perfumes in my collection that instantly comes to mind when I'm thinking about like a bombshell, sexy, powerful feminine energy, siren, you name it, <laughs> kind of perfume. The rose in here smells hot, like a hot, deep magenta. If this was a fabric, it would be lace. 
not like white lace. It'd be freaking black or red. So we have juicy, kind of fruity-like hibiscus paired with this hot magenta rose, and then we have a creamy, sweetened vanilla that's just like covering this composition and it's just like ah oh. and it's got this unique undertone twist from a smooth leather to me the leather really isn't prominent in here but it gives it its deeper base and then there's cassis and a bit of mint providing a green component to the scent i am a chronic over sprayer not with this i use four four sprays i literally have <laughs> a little label on the bottom. I do this with some of my perfumes, with some of them. I will put a little reminder for like the golden number <laughs> of sprays. Because sometimes, you know, it's very important that I adhere to that. And little things like that can keep me from being a menace to society. So yes, lasts all day, strong projection. Then from the replica line, Maison Margiela, you already know what I'm going to say because it's the one I always talk about. <laughs> Jazz Club. Jazz Club, I feel like, is a really attractive, sexy, kind of androgynous, like a perfectly androgynous kind of perfume. So even though you could say it's like unisex leaning masculine, I just, I really find this also insanely attractive on a woman um, and myself. Even though this has a lot of you know, traditionally deeper, darker, sultry notes. We got rum, tobacco, spices. This is an eau de toilette concentration, so it never becomes like too heavy or too much. I'll be honest, the majority of the replica line, the performance sucks, but I get like six hours moderate projection from this. I'm happy with that. It really does smell like you're waltzing into this dimly lit wooden bar. Jazz music is playing. You got you got the regulars, you know? They're drinking their rum out of their like fancy glasses, smoking cigars. This doesn't smell like smoke to me. Like I don't get like a smoky presence. I more so get the smell of a cigar rather than cigar smoke. It smells like a put together dark outfit. I love this fresh, dry, spicy, pink pepper, sage, vetiver. There's vanilla in here. I get like a non-sweetened vanilla, not gourmand whatsoever. It kind of just smooths over the spices, the booze, and the tobacco. And this also has this balmy, resinous-like texture from the Styrax. Without question, my favorite from Maison Margiela. Last, certainly not least, Rosé number two, number five. I know I've said like a couple times in this video sample first, but this is also another one I'm just gonna point out because I know some of you ignore me and you go ahead and blind by regardless. <laughs> Heed my words because this will be either a love or hate. It's a polarizing fragrance. This is gonna be like the best thing ever to you or you're not gonna, you're gonna disagree. This has a prominent note of saffron, which I am obsessed with, absolutely obsessed with. If you watch my videos, you know full well. Some people's noses will interpret the saffron in here to have a rubber-like smell. I luckily don't get that. For me, the saffron makes this smell like a, a perfume out of a fantasy book or something. Saffron has a really special, airy, exotic, trailing-like character. So I smell this and I think of like, dark pixie dust or something. This is widely talked about as one of the sexiest perfumes you can have. Like people come out with the most wild stories regarding this perfume. I wish I could input something. I haven't had one of those. I do get plenty of compliments with it for sure, but not any, any like, you know, stalker <laughs> stories. Thank goodness, I'm not manifesting that. But you know, you wanna have that kind of impact on people. You wanna risk it, see if you can find your own story. <laughs> <laughs> then this might be one to, to put on. So saffron bomb, and then a really smooth, warm, inviting amber. And to me, the amber comes across like a white amber. It's not amber done whatsoever in the way like this kind of amber is. This is much more deep, 
resinous. It's got a really sexy, sensual musk. Like you get a good musk in a perfume, you put that on your skin, it's like hollow. Literally says sensual musk on the plaque. So they were, they were standing by this. And then a vanilla. It's not gourmand, it's not sugary, it's a very airy vanilla. This acts similarly to the way Baccarat Rouge 540 does in terms of how it performs. Like it has this airy trailing effect that really projects and lasts. So that completes my list for today. The perfumes that are very hyped, but I think worth it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you wanna see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having a great day and hope to see you in my next video. Bye.